welcome to today's section. Yeah, let's continue what we did just a uh, few, or just the last. Now we are looking at the cost of consideration. With the cost of consideration, we share that it's comprised of what cash, and then share exchange, normally called share for share. Good. Don't forget that most most often the share exchange has not been recorded, so we have to do the entry. How do you record it? We said that you have to add it to this, add it to the cost of consideration, and then add it to the share capital of the parent. Add it to the share capital of what the parent. Share cap of parent. Good. That's it. Of P parent. Then you are done. Today I will just uh, we explain what there were some two common guys among the cost of consideration. They are the deferred consideration and then contingent consideration. So I think I'll pick one illustration on deferred co consideration and then the share exchange. So now be with me. Let's see if we can do that together. So nice illustration here for you. Share exchange. Harry acquired eighty percent of ten million ordinary share of for Sally by offering by offering a share exchange of one for every four one for four shares acquired. The fair value of the shares is three dollars. Per share, okay. So fair value of Harry share, Harry shares is three dollars. So we said that get the number of share the parent is giving to acquire this sub, then multiply it by the fair value, and then you pass the entry to record a share issue. Mostly they've not recorded the share issue, so you have to do the entry. So yeah, let's go to the board. Eighty percent of ten million. That's the number of shares. Acquired by the uh, what's the name? Harry, yes, it's Harry, yes. So now let's see. Good, 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 good. Okay, so what do you do? Wait, what happened? Hmm. Okay, now let's go to the board. 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 Okay. So what do you do is just write share exchange. So share exchange. So how many shares you acquired? So we are quite 80 million. And how many shares are we giving? It's one for four. We are quite eighty percent of the ten million shares. So eighty percent of ten million. It think that the subsidiary is having ten million shares, and then the parents are quite eighty percent. And we pay by offering what? One for four. Is that one new shares? for every four existing or to have to identify the new one and existing one done. So it means that the number of shares acquired by the parent will be 80 by 10. That will give us 8 million. So it's bracket to be 80 percent times the 10 million. This will just give us the number of shares acquired. Then you multiply it by the share exchange ratio, which is one out of four. So every four shares acquired come for one in my own for free. This one will give us the number of shares. So it means that the shares that you're going to issue will be two million times the share price at the date of acquisition. And we're told that the share price or the fair value of the parent share 
is worth three dollars. So you must have about three dollars. So good. So this will give us um let's see, let's see, let's see. That this one give us eight two three six. So to give us six million. So if I should probably raise some thousand, so it'll be six thousand. There wants to be the accounting entry. If not recorded it, yes, if recorded it here, this one leg, this is the one leg, this is the debit section. We have debited the investment, cost of investment, this is it, good. Now what do you do? The other section is shares. This one, these shares are coming from the parent. So what you do is that we add it to the parent share capital. And again, add it to the parent share capital. So second treatment, add, to the parent, parent share capital, share capital, in where? Statement of financial position. Good. Then you are done, it ends there. I'm down the share issue. Now let's go and pick a um, deferred consideration. Let's see how best we can do deferred consideration. Let's see how best you can do the fair consideration. Then we are done with the cost of control. Then move on to the next step that you have to take care of. So these are the issues that probably when they pop up in the exams, you should be calling for us and then be fine. Okay, good. So let's pick this question. You can still try uh, May 2017 question for us if you have the past question. Now, Pony acquired 80% um, of 30 million share, one Ghana, one dollar equity shares of uh, Star on 1st January 2015. The consideration was through the offer of share exchange of two shares issued for every three shares acquired and a cash payment of one uh, one dollar per share payable on 31st December 2015. The fair value of Pony's equity shares was two dollars at that at the date of acquisition which is what january 2015 now the present value of one dollar received in one year's time yes you have to give us a discount factor is your cost of capital now i will solve this question too for twelve like two years or three years this one the deferred consideration will be paid exactly 12 months time or one year because the acquisition was made when? 1st January 2015 or 2005 and then it will be payable on 1st, uh, 23rd December 2015. So if it's January to December, that's one year. Now let's calculate the cost of investment in staff. Let's calculate the cost of investment and how to deal with the how to deal with the deferred consideration. That is it. Uh, good, 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 good. Now let's go to the board. Now let's go to the board. So we will take this section off. Then yeah, from here, I'll be a bit fast. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what you do is uh, you record dollar of three zeros from top. Then you say the pony acquired 80%. So you, you took 80% of what? Of um, stars 30 million ordinary shares. So 30 million shares. 80% of 30 million now give us 24 million, right? Good. You acquired 24 million shares. Mm -hmm. How did he pay? 
the consideration was made by our share exchange of two shares. So two for every three. So two new for L for, for three existing. Online where this what existing. Just identify the existing and identify the new one for me. I'm okay. So and a cash consideration which will be paid one year's time. One year time. So how do you start? You can say share exchange. Share exchange. Open your bracket nicely. So there's another that it will be eighty percent of thirty times two out of three. This one alone is what the number of shares the parent is giving out to acquire the subsidiary times the share price, which is what two dollars at the date of acquisition it was given. So 24 divided by three, that'll give us eight times two, 16 by two, so 32. So to give us 32,000, good. So that's 32,000. And you go to deferred consideration, deferred consideration. And he said that, and a cash payment of $1 per share, payable in one year's time. So what do you do? Just find a present value. Now they've given us the present value, they've given us the discount factor. Yes. When they've given you the, the discount factor, I mean the calculation, not the cost of capital itself, can we use it? Okay, the examiner said that the discount factor for year one is 0.91, which is at what 10%. You can calculate it. Yes, if this one is not given to you in a question, use the 10% to calculate it. You can find it. Uh -huh. So that is it. Yeah, that uh, all I have to do is that get the amount. The amount will be say one dollar per share. You acquired how many? 80% of 30 million. That will give us 24 million. So to be 24 million times what? Dollar of one. So all of these times one over the cost of capital. But here, the cost of capital is given to you to be point zero nine one already. So you just multiply by it and then you are done. However, if this cost of capital is not given and they are giving you the discount factor, sorry, this is the discount factor, this is the cost of capital. Now, if you have not given the discount factor and then you're giving the cost of capital, you can just use it to do the calculation. So you have to be 24 by 0.91 million, and that will give us 21,840. So 21,840. So this one be the total consideration. Uh -huh. So that is it. Let's assume that this one has not been given to you. They'll just give you the cost of capital to be 10%. When you do that, just multiply by one over one plus zero dot one to the power of one. If you're going to pay in two years time to the power of two, so you're going to pay in three years time to the power of three in that order. And you're going to pay in just a year. So you can just leave it like that or put one there to the power one. Good. It also give you the same answer, just that there'll be some decimals. mouse. So take note and then you are fine. So 24 divided by one dot one. That's 21.81. Good. So that is it. Now putting this together will be 21.84 plus 32 so total consideration of 53,840 53,840 as a total consideration then what you do is now what's the other entry if you've not recorded the share exchange don't forget to add the parent share capital now for the deferred consideration after you bring in it here, it does not end here. What, what do you do? You find the, you got something, unwind of the discount. You have to unwind the discount. So you bring the PV of the consideration 
or open balance of the defect consideration. So open balance of the defect consideration. The open balance is two uh miss is two one eight four zero. Then you find the on one of the discount to it and then you are done. So on one of the discount. So on winding of the discount. All what you mean is you call it increase in provision. So pick the present value, which is two one eight four zero. Multiplied by the discount factor, which is ten percent, to give you two thousand eight four zero. So two thousand eight four zero. Then you are done. You sum it up, and this will become the closing balance of the liability. Closing balance of the liability. Then put them together. You have this one is a finance cost. You add it to the Finance cost group or the parent where the parent profit is must go there. It's a cost to the parent. It's a cost to the parent. That is the finance cost. And you put this one together and you show it as what? As liability at the end of the year. Liability at the end of the year. So that's the treatment. Okay. So now we are done with the cost of consideration. We are continuing the standard workings for the financial position. Okay, so that is it. So now let's go to workings three, which is important. Workings three. Workings number three that you need to do in consolidation of financial position. Yeah, workings number three is the net asset of the subsidiary. Net assets, net asset of of the sub of the subsidiary. The net asset of subsidiary. Good. Of the subsidiary. Good. Now, um, I think it's not coming where of the sub. Now, what you do is you say at acquisition, so at acquisition, something like this, at reporting. As a reporting period, so something like this, and post acquisition, post what acquisition to me that after acquisition, you should understand something like this. If you acquire a guy here, if yes, acquisition, acquisition date, here going to call post acquisition period, post what acquisition period. Because we are going to make use of this transaction that occur here. The treatments are different from transaction that occur here. Good. You have to take note. So post acquisition, acquisition period. And we have pre acquisition. Yes, yeah, so what? Pre acquisition. Pre acquisition period. So take note. We have post acquisition and pre acquisition period. So, this is how we should go by it. So, good. Mm -hmm. Now, let's see what is the composition of net assets of the entity. Your net asset, we are not going to list the actual asset, but you are going to use the equity accounting method or the equity section. So, you bring the you pick the equity section of the subsidiary, equity section of the subsidiary. So bring the share capital, the share capital, both at acquisition and at reporting. Normally, there's an assumption that since acquisition, the, the 
subsidiary have not issued any shares. So if the subsidiary have not issued any shares, so the share capital at acquisition or the share capital at the reporting period is the same as the share capital at acquisition. Let me repeat again. Uh, share capital. Now, the share capital at reporting is the same as the one that's at acquisition. Why? Because we are going to make an assumption that after acquisition or during the post acquisition period, the during post acquisition period, so from here going at acquisition, the subsidiary have not issued any shares again. So it means that whatever is having at the reporting period, it should, it should be the same as what should have been at acquisition. So here to be the same. Post means this money is this, means it's not this money is this, it's this money is this. So that's that here. Here will be dash always because they are the same figure. Then go to the retained earnings and then the other reserves. Either the reserves or the retained earnings. The retained earnings of the retained earnings of the subsidiary, both at acquisition and at reporting. Now, if the question is mid-year, like uh, you acquired a guy six months to the year and three months, nine months, for those questions, if care is not taken, the retained earnings at the date of acquisition might not be given to you, and you have to use adjustments. Yes. So be with us when we go to the question solving stage. There are more questions like that that we are going to do justice to it. So this manage this, it will give you what you call post acquisition profit or post acquisition retained earnings. That figure is post acquisition retained earnings. Then you are done with the other reserves. If there's any other reserves, you bring it. You also call it capital surplus. Yeah. Other reserves such as revaluation, surplus, capital surplus, all those parts must be in it. Then you are done. Okay. Now let's continue. From here, then you go to what do you mean by uh Fair value adjustment. So you go to your fair value adjustment. Fair value adjustments. Now, fair value adjustment simple means uh, at the date that you acquire the subsidiary, some of the assets, the fair value will not will not equal to their book value. This is the book value. It's also called the current amount. Now hear me. If you are going to acquire company or when parent acquire subsidiary, please and please again, they did not acquire the book values of the asset. They only acquired the fair value of the net asset, not the book value. Why? Because the book value might not speak the truth about the company. Or the book value can be what manipulated so what do you do you buy the fair value not the book value so it means that at the date of acquisition you have to perform valuation uh -huh. but sometimes this valuation will be performed but it has not been incorporated in the books so the examiner will tell you so you just have to compare the fair value and the book value assuming that there's a plant which have a fair value of let's say six, six thousand, and the book value is let's say four thousand. Good. So here, because they will use the book value in the calculation, if you use the book value and you know that we don't acquire book value, no, we acquire fair value. So what magic can we perform to change this four thousand that they have used? to 6,000. Okay, then there's a fair value gain of what, 2,000. Uh -huh. So fair value, so can be plants. If the fair value is more than the book value, it will create what you mean by fair value gain. 
good. So here's a plant. I record a plant and put it both at um, acquisition, which will be 2,000, and at reporting, 2,000, and here will be dash. So that's the fair value adjustment that we are talking about. We normally tell you that it has not been recorded, and that's how we are going to record it at the both sides, at our acquisition and at reporting. However, if that asset is depreciable, it will create what you call additional depreciation because they should have depreciated the fair value 6,000. But if not, if calculated depreciation on the 4,000, the thing that the depreciation they've charged on that 4,000 so far since acquisition to the reporting period is wrong. So it's small, it's supposed to be, be on this. So that is it. Now be with us. Here to this inherent trick in it that you normally apply the trick and then you are done. So just divide this one by the remaining useful life of the asset. So you, you divide the fair value gain by the remaining useful life of the asset from the acquisition date and you multiply it by the number of years. That's the period of consolidation. Good, so that is it. So all what I'll say is this, fair value adjustment, just bring it here, bring it here, dash. It will create what you call sometimes additional depreciation. If it's a fair value gain, it will create additional depreciation. And the, if you calculate the depreciation cumulatively, it's cumulative, not just for a period. Uh, here we dash, put it at the, this section and then you put it here too. And then you are true. Then if there's any PUP provision for unrealized profit, PUP, PUP, if if what sub is the seller, PUP. I've explained this. If sub is the seller, so open a bracket and write if sub is what if sub is what. Uh, the seller, let me just write seller here. This sub is the seller. Okay. Now I'll come another second one. You subtract, do it here, you subtract. So basically, this is the net asset of the subsidiary. The net asset of the subsidiary. So that is it. Now, you sum it up, you sum it up. You sum it up, and then you are done. So total at acquisition, total at reporting, and post acquisition. This one is this. This one is we give out what is there. Okay, so that is it. Have you seen how we've done it? Go. So this is the net asset of the subsidiary. So and then you are, you are fine. Now let's go to the workings number four. Can we back your illustration? Yes, we can back your illustration. Let me see if I can get nice question. For trial, nice question for trial. Nice question for trial. Let's see, fantastic can be of help. Any question at all, Suyani? Okay, I've been pouring Bantama. I've been pouring Bantama, Bantama. Bantama. I see some notes here. Fair value of having post land at the date of acquisition was 4 million in excess of the current value. Please, when you say land, land is not depreciable, so don't expect them to give you depreciation. Good. Uh huh. Then take it in. This is what you mean by fair value adjustment. So 4 million, both at what? At acquisition and at reporting. You are done. It ends there. Now, there's an issue here. Any figure that you key in, let me explain this. Any figure that you enter, which is not in the question, so which is not on the financial statement, you have you have entered it here to go to the financial position. So this fair value gain that you uh, additional depreciation, this fair value gain, it will go to where? To go to the financial position. When you go, you add. Here you are subtracting. So when you go, you subtract. This one to go to the financial position, the source. So that's one thing about it. Any figure that enters there at reporting also goes there. 
then you are fine. I think I'll walk you through and then next time we'll pick a question solving. I think we should finish all the steps. Now let's go to the next one. Then you are done. Then we are going to do the work four or note four. Workings four. The workings four now talks about good wall. Good wall. So the workings four should be good wall. And here, good wall, there are two types because of the evaluation of the NCI. There are two types. We have the fair value model or the full good wall. We have the proportionate interest method. I'll walk you through all of them and then you define. So, good wall, there are two methods. So, method one. An examiner will tell you which method to use. If they don't tell you, you can use the proportional interest method if the server is not given to you. Uh -huh. So let's start with the with the proportional interest method. Proportional interest method. Now I'll write uh, the full name of it so that when we see it, you identify it in the question for me. Good. So. That is it. Proportionate interest towards method. Then you are done. Proportionate interest method. Then you are done. If there's any question, can we ask you? If not, hmm. Into the chapter two. So that is it. That is it. Okay. So I have a nice question here that I will look at it at a question solving stage. And uh, let's go. So we call it proportionate interest method. I had a full name for you so that uh, normally it confuses. So uh, so proportionate interest method. So proportionate interest method. Proportionate interest method. That's the first name. We call it proportionate interest method. Or oh, parent share. Share of fair value, hmm. fair value of the net assets. But normally, the word fair value of identifiable net assets, identifiable net assets, not any net asset, too. fair value of identifiable net assets those that you can identify good now it also means parent goodwill only parent goodwill only no goodwill for nci no goodwill for nci uh-huh it's also called old method. I don't like this one. Ocean's old method. In fact, in the business combination, IFRS3, before they revise it, this was the method that was, was inside. So I call it old method. Uh -huh. 
after the revision, they brought the new one, which is the fair value or the full good rule. Good. So all of these are the same. So all of these are the same. Take note of this. I will explain it when I get to the next one. Before you close the chapter for the day. Good. This one is like premium. Show, 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 show. Then you're done. Time to finish. I'm done with the story. Okay. So let's see. Now that you know the name, let's look at the issues. How to copy the good wall. So there are two types. In fact, here too, there are two uh, ways of calculating it. It's already a simplest way for yourself. So of which one? Uh, you bring the cost of consideration or the cost of control. In fact, good wall simple means the excess of the cost of consideration over the identifiable net assets. If you are acquiring a business or subsidiary where the consideration where the consideration that you transfer to acquire is more than the net assets, it means that some of the assets are invisible, you pay more than the value of the net assets. That's a good rule. So here, let's the parent share, parent or share of the net asset at acquisition. Good, so much. This is what you mean by goodwill at reporting period. Goodwill at acquisition. This is a goodwill. When you look at parent goodwill only, this one is for only parents. So. This one is good rule at acquisition. Then make impairment. Impairment of good rule. According to IAS 36 and then IAS 38, any intangible asset that do not have a definite life, it must be what? It must not be amortize instead every year test for impairment if there's any impairment you bring it here you less it so this become good rule at what reporting so this good rule at reporting good rule at what reporting perfect so that is it now this is a method one this is the method one. Good. There's a second method that we use. Uh, I'll do that one on the other side of the board for you. So, method two. I want to store. You start from under the under the proportionate interest method. We also call it partial method. Yes, partial goodwill. Call it partial good rule. That good rule is for only parents. How to calculate it? This is the first method. Second method. How to calculate that good rule? Uh, second method. You start by saying so cost of consideration. Cost of consideration is the same as consideration. Good. So cost of consideration. So much. And here you add the net assets, NCI share of net assets at acquisition. We call it fair value of NCI, proportionate method. So you add NCI, NCI share of the net asset at acquisition. Good, so much. This will give you total consideration transfer. Don't give us total consideration and you put it here. Then you less the net asset of the subsidiary at a position. Net asset at what? At a position. So that is it. At a position. You take it off and this will give us a good wall. So this is a good wall at a position. 
each good row is at a position. To get a good row at reporting, what do you do? You less impairment. The less impairment. And then it will give you a good row at what? At reporting. What's the difference between good row at reporting and at acquisition? The difference is impairment. Because you get a good row, the first day you acquire the guy, there's a good row, you pay good row, and that good row will be there. And then at the end of each reporting period, you have to test for impairment, whether the investment has been impaired. And you write it off against the good row, and then you are done. So this is the format that we will probably use. So select one. If I select for you, I select the first one. Yes, that's what uh, I mostly use. So you just have to find the consideration, find the parent share of net asset after position. That's what to give you the good rule. And over here, you add the NCI share rather to it and subtract the entire net asset. So this is the method one. We call it partial good rule, proportionate interest method. Good. Then I'll go to the second aspect. The second aspect, the second method of good rule calculation. Good. So that is it. Now the next method is called. We are still just working through the format so that if you pick any question, you can still go by this basic principles. <laughs> So that when we are solving, you can be referring to this format and then you go by it. Uh, fine. The next method of good rule, we call it fair value method. So that's a method two of good rule. Fair value method. But I also call it full good rule. Wow. Full good rule. This is a full, not a share. Full goodwill. It includes goodwill of the parent plus the goodwill of the NCI. That's what we call it full goodwill. Good. It's also called as name one. The first name is fair value, second name is full goodwill. I will call it the new method. I don't like the new method because which one is new transport? New method. After the revision of IFRS3 business combination, they brought new new methods, new way of valuing goodwill. So that is it. Now these are three names that is I'm now use for you. Now let's see the format. Yeah, the format is there's an alternative format, but that one is too lengthy, so I'll not even uh, go to that one. And then we stick to just one, the most common one. Good. So that is it. Good, 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 good. Good. Okay, now let's look at the format uh, of the fair value method. So I'll just turn in the new one. But the fair value method, the good rule is so nice. The calculation of the good rule is so nice. It's so nice. You also start from the cost of consideration or cost of control. Cost of consideration or cost of control. So much. Then what do you do? You add a fair value of NCI because good is at fair value. Thank you. So add a fair value of what? Of NCI at acquisition. I like that. At what? Acquisition. So take note. Fair value of the NCI at acquisition. You add it to it and it will give you total consideration transferred. So this is what parents pay. It seems that is a what parents pay. Parents pay this, NCI also pay this. So coming together, the total consideration transfer to acquire the subsidiary is this and it's okay let's what the net asset at acquisition so net asset at acquisition 
let the net asset at acquisition coming from workings number three net asset of acquisition the totality is workings number three when you get this answer then we call it what good well good well now this good will is at what acquisition unless it's less impairment and you test for impairment if there's any impairment you take it off and then when you take impairment off you get what the good will at reporting please this format must be with you good will at what at reporting however with this the impairment will be shared between parents and then the subsidiary using the group structure or the control structure. So a parent will take his portion and NCR2 will take his portion. However, under the proportionate interest method, that one good was only for what parent. So if there's any loss, which is the impairment, parent must bear it what alone. So that is it. You only share the impairment if NCI is mean fair value. If I using the fair value model or fair value method, you can go ahead and share the impairment. However, if I using the proportional interest method, whatever good, whatever impairment you get, you don't need to share. It's, the parent must bear all. So this is the fourth method. So that is it. Good. I'm done with the fourth method. Let me the last two methods to end today's section. We are just considering the methods and then we will start one full question involving the calculation. Don't forget to do with us when you get that section. Okay. Good, 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 good. Okay, now let's continue with the uh, workings number five. That's the group retain earnings. We call it parent what? Parents retain earnings. That's where the parent profit is. Subsidiaries profit is at what? It's at the debt assets. So workings number five contains what? Parent, where parent profit is, we call it group retain earnings or group reserves. So, groups retain earnings. Good. With that, you pick the retain earnings of the parent or of parents. So, pick all. Of what? So just take the parents retain earnings at the end of the reporting period. All of parents bring it here. Subsidiary parents share of subsidiaries uh, retain earnings. That's the post acquisition changes in the net assets. So here, when you bring the subsidiary into bracket, parent share. Just pick the parent share. You can pick the entire amount if it is worth wholly owned subsidiary, meaning parent is having 100% stake in that subsidiary. Nobody else, there's no non controlling interest. NCI, no. Meaning, here, there's no what? Backyard garden, right? Full access, full control. That is it. So that's the wholly owned. Good. You add it here. Then profit from associates. If you have associates, where we will go to associates. So associate profits. So we we'll go to associates. I want to bracket parent share of associate profit. Parent share. Now what again? PUP provision for unrealized profit. You can just call it unrealized profit. Unrealized profit. 
here in the bracket, if parent is what? The seller. If parent is the seller. We saw this one under the net asset method, but we said that that one, if the subsidiary is the seller, then bring it here. Don't forget about impairment too. Impairment. So impairment of assets must be here. Impairment of the less impairment. PUP, you less it. And basically any other issues you affect it. And this is the group retain and it's good. It's a group retain and it's good. So basically, and this group retain and it's go to the statement of financial position. It go to a statement of financial position good. So after the parent equity, yeah, we do not uh, consolidate the equity of the subsidy because that's what you have used transfer to calculate what the net assets. And I want to use it to calculate the goodwill. So we don't consolidate that. So when you go to the equity section of the group account, it should be the parent share capital alone plus the group retained earnings. And this is the group retained earnings. And any other group reserves, you bring it, then you are done. Good. So let's see if you can go ahead and then do the remaining parts and then you are done. Okay, so that is it. Now the next one is the workings number six. Workings number six, that is the that is the NCI. NCI at reporting to work in six NCI at work reporting at the reporting. This is the NCI that will go to the statement of financial position as the NCI at reporting. For NCI at reporting, there are two methods. I'll do the fair value method first and go to proportionate interest. Is a fair value method. And you pick the fair value of the NCI at the date of what acquisition. So fair value of NCI. In fact, this is what we used to calculate the goodwill. So you can refer to the goodwill method. The same fair value key in there. Just carry the same guy here. Don't even change it. The fair value of the NCI. So much. Then you add NCI support. Post change post acquisition return earnings. So NCI NCI's share of post acquisition changes in net asset. Share of post acquisition changes in net assets. Yes, post acquisition net assets. We bring it here. And then we bring impairment. 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 For fair value model only, impairment comes for fair value model or fair value method only. Take note, not for proportionate. Unless it's then this is the NCI at the report. And this one goes to statement of financial position, and then you are done. We are just explaining this, and then we back with the last question. Can you join us when we go to the last session? If I've not subscribed, please subscribe. Yes, subscribe to the channel and then share. Good. Invite a friend to target professional concepts. Yes. And experience the young generation. Experience. Huh? Okay. Let more people and then experience the profession in different dimension. Now working number. Seven. I not do the NCI proportionate. 
If I proportion in just method, yes, what do you just did? The working number seven. And see I at reporting. At what reporting. If you are using what partial method or proportionate interest method, now I just pick the NCI share of net asset at acquisition. NCI share of the net asset at acquisition. So much. Just add the post acquisition. NCI share of what? So you can just write share of the post acquisition profit. Then you bring it here. Yeah, no impairment. No impairment. This one give you this one give you the the MCI at reporting. Or automatically is the same as this answer after adding this and the same as you find NCI share of of net asset at reporting. When you calculate NCI share of net assets at reporting to give you the same answer then you are done okay now let's go to the last workings working seven then we are done for the day the next time we meet we pick our question and start doing justice to it good now working seven talks about investment in associates investment in associates. Associates is where we don't have control, which range from 20 to uh, 49 percent there. Okay. Good. So with our investment in associates, all you have to do is you bring the consideration transferred, all of them the consideration, cost of consideration paid or fair value of the consideration or cost of consideration so much and here to you add the uh, post acquisition profits so parent share of the post acquisition profit so here parent share it's not a parent but investor you write Parent, it seems like there's control. Investor, good. Okay. You are right, investor. Or what do you do? Just write share of what? Share of post acquisition profit. Good. If there's any impairment, you take it off. If there's any PUP, if the Associate is the seller. If associate is a seller, PUP, you bring it here. Or if the parent too is a seller, if the parent, if the parent is what the seller, good. You take it off, and then you are done. Good. You take it off, and then you are done. Impairment you must be subtracted. So this investment in associate is not good statement of financial positions and assets to be part of the non-current assets. Good. Consolidated statement of financial position. This is the end of today's section. Thank you very much then uh, for coming. Kindly subscribe and then share the video to all your friends. Yes, and then uh, if you have any question, kindly comment it, leave your com comment section there. And can you do with us when you're solving all the questions? You're going to solve all the questions, then you'll be fine. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye.